Okay, so let us continue with the fifth lecture. So, as we have seen, uh, this two property for function of one variable completely determines as written in the other board the derivative f prime x naught that it is it approximates the increment f x naught plus h minus f x naught and it approximate linearly. This leads us to the definition of function differentiability of function of several variables and that is the correct definition. Now, I will write the correct definition. Remember that we have discarded the other two, first one completely discarded, second one with the reservation. So, we just see now what is the correct definition, here it is, so here is my setup again. And u as I said, unless otherwise specified, open connected connected is not that important, but sometime it is open connected set and I have x naught in u. F is differentiable at x naught, if what will happen now? There exists a linear approximation of f for the increment f x naught plus h minus f x naught. That is, if there exist a linear operator let us denote it let us denote it by d f at x naught from r n to r m such that I follow the definition, I follow the exact not notion of for single variable, I write this error term as f x naught plus h minus f x naught, this approximation is d f x naught h or as we have written before, same thing I am writing d f x naught at h. where goes to 0 as h goes to 0. Remember, h is in R n, right. h goes to 0 means norm of h goes to 0. So, this is the exact analog of this property 1 and 2. So, d f x naught is a linear functional. So, it acts on this vector h and approximate f x naught plus h up to an error term which goes to 0, which up to error term into norm h and the error term goes to 0 as it goes to 0. So, this is the correct definition we will see right now for derivative of function of several variable and it exactly matches a function of one variable. And remember, we wanted our differential function to be continuous and we immediately have it. Same setup, like that, f is differentiable at x naught implies f is continuous at x naught.
how? Just too easy from the definition. Let me write it again in this form. Correct. Now, I take mod on both sides. Use triangle inequality. Mod is a scalar comes out. Correct. Now you put h goes to 0, h goes to 0, norm h goes to 0. So, this quantity goes to 0 as well and this norm h goes to 0 and E x naught h goes to 0. So, this norm goes to 0. So, what do we get? Continuity y, because now if I have x n converges to x naught, x n, x naught both are in the domain u, then you just put h to be x n minus x naught. Apply this, you will see f of x n converges to f of x naught. In this inequality from first line to second line, I have used something here. So, what we have used here? Okay. What we have used here is, let me explain on the other board. So, definition is clear, look at the definition again, look at this proof, modulo this inequality which I have written, which I am going to explain now. Okay, see, d f x naught is a linear operator from R n to R m. Linear operator means, all of you know, it takes x plus alpha y to, so a of x plus alpha y, a x plus alpha a y, right. And if from your linear algebra, you know linear operators along with the linear operators comes the concept of this operator norm. So, what we have used here is this. Suppose A from R n to R m is a linear operator. Correct. Then we have this notion of norm of A, which is supremum of norm x. So, x in R n, norm x equal to 1 a x, which is same as by dividing x in R n, just R n, x not equal to 0, A x by norm x. So, norm of A is the supremum of this quantity. So, that will imply for all x in R n, is the supremum, so it is the bigger than anything, A x is less than equal to norm A into norm x. That is what we have used here. D f x naught is a linear operator acting on H. So, norm of D f x naught H is less than equal to norm of D f x naught into norm of H. And there is a little fact that you verify from linear algebra that every A R n to R m has norm bounded, it is a fixed quantity. So, we have it. So, this continuity problem is taken care of.
Okay. So, this notion of derivative is really nice for us and actually if you what I said that one possible definition was to fix one direction and then claim that fix one direction look at this uh, limit along directions and then claim that for every direction that exists then f is differentiable we have to discard it for some reason. But that is sometime actually you can recover that derivative from this definition. So, what I mean here that we will call that second definition as directional derivative and let me show you how to recover the directional derivative from derivative. So, again So, suppose u is a fixed direction unit vector that gives a direction. What was our definition? Second definition limit h goes to 0 f of x naught plus h u minus f x naught divided by h. Okay. Let us give it a name is called d u f x naught and call it directional derivative of f at x naught in the direction u. Suppose d f x naught exist, that is f is differentiable in the original sense of definition we just made. Then what will happen? From here I know from the definition h u minus f x naught will be d f x naught right acting at h u plus norm of h u e x naught h u correct. This is equal to this is a linear operator h is a scalar h d f x naught u plus h into mod of u norm of u, but norm of u is 1. So, e x naught h u. Okay. So, I get this. So, now I divide by h goes away correct. Now, you put h goes to 0 what happens? h goes to 0 implies norm of h u which is mod h this goes to 0. So, e x naught h u this goes to 0 according to the definition of derivative and this quantity is bounded is plus or minus 1 is bounded by plus 1 or minus 1 according to h the, the, the sign of derivative. So, what will happen? Finally, we get okay, let me write on this board itself the entire analysis leads to d u f at x naught this is equal to d f x naught acting at u and we will use it to actually calculate derivative of a function. Remember this what is there in the box. I will show you 
in today's class that how to actually compute this fellow d f x naught with examples maybe next class, but we have to use this idea this equality. So, now let us come to this point how to compute d f x naught given an f. We have to recall bit of linear algebra here. But how do you realize a linear operator? This question is related to how do you realize a linear operator? Suppose A is a linear operator from R n to R m. A linear operator to determine a linear operator actually depends or it is completely determined how do you fix basis for R m and R m. So, I will show you perhaps all of you know it from your linear algebra course, but still let me do it it is very important for us. So, let E 1 n E 2 n E n n this is a basis for R n you can take the canonical basis 0 1 1 1 0 0 sorry 1 0 0 0 1 0 0 so all of you know the canonical basis, but it does not matter you take any basis. I will give some example in the assignment and E 1 m E 2 m E m m this is a basis for the target space R m. Okay. Let us take any x in R n. This fellow being a basis, I can write x as summation j equal to 1 to n x j e j n, right. Correct? Very good. What is x? x is linear operator. So, on the sum it goes inside. So, it goes j equal to 1 to n x j a e j n this is by linearity. Now, a e j n is where a is from r n to r m. So, a e j n is a fellow in vector in r m. So, and now I have a basis for r m. So, I can write it in terms of the basis of R m. So, for each j I can write A e j n as summation i equal to 1 to m sum A i j, j is fixed i will vary from 1 to m e i m correct. I have written each of this fellow in terms of this basis. So, what happens to A x? Okay. So, this you see you can write Suppose now I fix my basis E i m equal to 0 0 0 at one place and 0 that is the canonical basis at ith place. And you see you can write it as a vector summation j equal to 1 to n a i 1 x j a sorry x a 1 x j j equal to 1 to n a 2 j x j and so on summation j equal to 1 to n a m j x j. 
a simple exercise you can do, but you immediately recognize what is this. This is if you look at this matrix A i j, which is matrix A i j i equal to 1 to m j equal to 1 to n acting on the vector x 1, x 2, x n. So, what it says that if x in the canonical basis is x 1, x 2, x n then A x equal to this fellow and this, this matrix acting on this and this is called matrix of A. Let us write this as matrix A. So, this is the way you calculate matrix of a linear operator. Uh, let me show you one example and in today's lecture and so one example. Let us take this operator A from R 2 to R 2. A of x 1, x 2, but x is a vector in R 2 given by x 1, x 2 is let us say x 1 minus x 2, x 1 plus x 2. I fix the basis 1, 0, 0, 1 of R 2, both side, so both are R 2. I say this side also this basis, this side also this basis. Now, what is matrix of A? Well, from here you note, from this calculation you note that first column of A is A E 1 and second column of A is A E 2. Just look at this calculation, you will get it. So, what is A E 1? 1, 0, 1, 1. What is A E 2? Minus 1, and 1. So, matrix let me write here matrix A equal to first column is 1 1, second column is 1 minus 1. This is one example. Next day we will do this exercise for D of f x naught. Thank you.